What's up, YouTubes? We have had our water maker now for six months. And in this video, we're gonna have a question and answer with questions that you guys sent in from our installation video and answers from both Ben, the technical advisor at Spectra, and yours truly, the people that actually have to live on the water this thing produces. After that, we're gonna tell you our thoughts about water makers in general and this one in particular. So if you're sitting there asking yourself questions like, what is a water maker? What does a water maker do? Why would you want one on a boat? Then you might wanna check out our video here. That is our installation and an explanation video, and that'll answer all of those questions. Lastly, keep in mind that this is a sponsored video. We're never gonna review a product that we're not 100% convinced by, or a company whose values we can stand behind. We're proudly sponsored by Spectra, and we will always be transparent about whom we're sponsored by, and if content is sponsored or not. Good? Excellent. So, without further ado, here's your questions. So, the power draw on your Ventura 150 is going to be around 121 watts, and it's going to run on about 13 and a half volts, or 13 volts, going at 9 amps or so. And we've got water makers that go on 12 volts, and our biggest one on 12 volts runs on uh, 18 amps, and that's a 400 gallon per day unit. We have 300 watts of solar on Zingaro, and that's plenty. If you run a water maker between 10 and 2 p.m., no problem. Ventura 150 has a minimum gallons per hour of 5.7. That's at 13 and a half volts. If you're running less than that, you might see a slight drop, but that's not a problem. As far as the gallons per hour, we really don't pay attention to that. It varies depending on how sunny of a day it is. It's really not that important. What is important to us is that we're able to run it for three or four hours at a time every other day or every third day and make enough water for us to do everything we want to do. Shower after we swim, do our dishes, clean the boat, Drink. Make, make cocktails, <laughs> make coffee. You know, closest to zero is not necessarily best. I'd say if it tastes good, that's best. We always say that your taste is the best judgment. Our water makers that we release here from the factory don't send out less than 300 parts per million. That's our requirement here, but uh, the EPA says anything less than 500 is good. The World Health Organization says anything less than 1,000 is good. People in the military are drinking things at 1,200. I personally can't taste anything less than 800. So the TDS that we always see is around 250, 300 ppm. And it tastes great. We use it for everything. We've never had a problem with the TDS on this thing. So the Clark pump is, um, it's unique. There's nothing like it in uh, systems that are less than 10,000 gallons a day. It's both a pressure intensifier as well as an energy recovery device. Conventional reverse osmosis systems have a high pressure pump and when they make water, that's at high pressure and that high pressure is, the water that's not made is discharged and at a high pressure between 500 and 1,000 PSI. We take that pressure, put it back into the Clark pump use it to intensify the feed pressure even more, and our discharge is about less than five PSI. So we recover that energy and it's quite efficient. No, you do not have to add minerals to your water maker. The membrane rejects 99.4% of the salt content, so there actually is still a residual amount of salt, enough that your body won't leach the minerals from your cells in the body. Typical membrane lasts about six years, although we see them last 10 or 15, um, or sometimes shorter. Every membrane is uh, unique and no two membranes are alike, but uh, typically the more you use it, the longer it'll last. We only run the water maker in places where we actually go swimming. So if the water is stinky or is just really murky for some reason, we don't go in to swim, we don't run the water maker, as to prolong the life of the filters. Definitely want to freshwater flush your system after every use. If you don't freshwater flush your system, not only can you get growth in just a couple days, but you're subjecting your all of your system to faster corrosion and potentially pinhole leaks. 
Well, uh, as far as your Ventura 150, the key electrical part is the feed pump. If the feed pump has been grounded and it's still working after you get struck by lightning, yes, uh, you can use the manual override switch. So this is actually one of my questions because I wanted to make sure if we got hit by lightning again, we would still be able to make water. And turns out, just like Ben said, as long as the feed pump is still pumping water, the thing will make water. If you feed it water, it will make water. It doesn't need any electronics, any electricity. You can literally burn that pump out and take the pump out of your freshwater system and replace it and it'll work. Now, how long will it work? Because it doesn't have any heat sinks, whatever. But that's the point. You can just bypass the valves manually, put, put it on manual run, and go. And it'll make water, which is a huge selling point for us because we have been hit by lightning and it, it was a bad day. And a piece of gear that important should have a fail safe, which it does. Thank you, Ben, for answering our questions and the questions of our viewers. Okay, these last few questions are just for us and they're personal questions about why we chose Spectra, why this model, and how it's changed our cruising life. I'll let you answer this one. Okay. The reason we contacted Spectra and asked for a collaboration was because we planned a route that took us to the most far-off destinations that you could possibly think of, where there is no infrastructure to get any water. And because we're on Zingaro, a very light catamaran, it is unsafe for us to carry as much water as we would need to spend as much time in the places as we want to. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, total sense. In a lot of the parts of the uh, Polynesian islands and the South Pacific, it doesn't rain enough for people to feed themselves and the cruisers that come through. So it's, it's literally impossible to find water on some of these remote atolls. And if you run out of water, it's a big deal. We asked for the Spectra Ventura 150. Spectra wanted to promote the Connect version, which has a user-friendly interface that tells you the PPM at all time, and it tells you for how long you ran the water maker already, you can autofill your tanks and all that. Turns out it is really convenient to have that, but if we would have paid the water maker out of our own pocket, we would have certainly gone with the base version of the model. See, I actually disagree. I think, honestly, if you're gonna pay six grand for a water maker, why not pay an extra 2,500 bucks for the completely automatic version of it? We never have to touch it. All we do is press a button and it goes. The big, big difference and what you're paying all that money for is when you start it up, you have to tell the water maker when to switch into the tanks. That means you have to taste it every time. That means you have to go down in the engine room, you have to change the valve, on this version, it's completely automatic. We never touch anything except the user display screen. It's really nice. And it, and it gives us the battery voltage, the PPM, all on one little screen. It's, it's actually really nice. It is very convenient. It tells you if your filters are starting to go bad, if you have to replace them soon and all that. So it's one less worry, you know? You, it tells you if you have to work on the water maker, the interface will tell you that. So, absolutely, but you know. Is it worth $2,500? That's for you to decide. Absolutely, absolutely not. Yes. I, I would not. I love the water maker. Uh, Spectra or not, I would never go cruising without a water maker now. And I recommend that everybody get a water maker. It just. It's like having an unlimited amount of food. Would you get a food maker? That's a no-brainer. <laughs> like a food printer. But it's a huge deal on a boat. I mean, you guys have seen us lugging jerry cans, you know, 35 times back and forth. And to a marina, yeah, great. But I've had to take a two-quart pitcher and go into a cistern under somebody's kitchen to get water for my boat. It's just ridiculous when there is the technology to turn salt water into fresh. That's all I'm saying. If you're able to budget for it from the very beginning, before you go cruising, you budget for a water maker, 
I would definitely do that if we were to do it all over again. Yeah, I'd budget for a water maker. But if that's a question of I'm gonna go cruising with a water maker or I'm just not gonna go cruising at all, then that's ridiculous. No, you it's it's all possible without a water maker, no doubt. But for the route that we chose and on this boat especially, we needed a water maker. There was just no way around it. And needed is a strong word. We know people that have had water makers that got rid of them because they were sick of working on them and they still cruise years and years of cruising. They are just very, very careful with their water usage. The problem with that is you have to be on a schedule, you know, because sooner or later you're gonna run out of water and by then you should be in a place that has water. So now we have the freedom to stay in places that we like, that are far of civilization. We can run naked around the woods for as long as we please, because we will always have water. And that's beautiful, but it just takes more planning without a water maker, and you're, you're just not as free without. And you're definitely more stinky. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Literally, in the last six months, all we've done is push the button to make water and change the filters twice. It was really, really easy. So no, it's not a lot of work. It's, with, this, with this model of water maker, we can't say on anything else. We wanted something that was green, that didn't need dinosaur juice to run. It was very important to us to have a low carbon footprint. There's enough plastic and petroleum products in the world and it runs on the sun. I mean, for me, it's it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Apart from the moral argument of not wanting to burn dinosaur juice, it is also endless, you know? That's the beauty of it. The sun rises every day, so every day we can stay in the places we want to stay, and this is the most important part about it, and this, this is why I keep on stressing this fact. We can stay in places for as long as we want because the sun is gonna rise the next day, which means we can make water, which means that we can live for another day where and how we please. Well said. Mic drop. <laughs> That's it with the questions that we received from you guys. If there's anything else that you would like to know about watermakers in general or this model, please feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll have Ben look over them and we'll, we'll try and answer them as good as we can. So if you decide that you need a watermaker, which as we said already, it's not required for all kinds of cruising. Coastal cruisers probably just don't need one. But if you're planning on going on a route less traveled and you want to find out what the difference between the different models and the different brands of water makers are, then James will make another video for you guys. Next water maker video coming out will be water maker comparisons where we talk about how to choose a water maker what the differences are in different companies and how to figure out exactly how much water you're going to use in a day. Oh, you're gonna like do the calculation too? Yeah, I'm gonna give people like a good calculation of, you know, what we use, what you'll use on this size of boat with this many people, normal oh, daily, cool. daily usage. Yeah, it's, a, it's an that important thing. That is really good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't be this surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay, later guys. Thanks for watching. Much love.